you think that's done enough? My leg hurt. for the intro. Are you going to ever do that again in there? Because we, we talked about it one time before. Huh? Oh, at the end? Okay. okay.
One, two, there I am. Good evening, everyone. Good to see all of you here tonight. We're going to sing a song that you're going to love tonight. And it's the reason we're all here because we love Jesus. Amen. Let's sing it together. Oh, how I love Jesus. All right. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing its word. It sounds like music in my ear. The sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love. Sing it out now. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh. Because he first loved me, it tells me of a Savior's love who died to set me free. Tells me of his precious blood, the sinner's perfect plea. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus Because he first loved me <clears throat> It tells of one whose loving heart The deepest woe Who in each sorrow bears a part That none can bear below Oh, how I love Jesus Oh, how I love Jesus Because he first loved me What a great song, huh? It's so good to see everybody here tonight Got the Russells on the back row back there it's Good to see y'all tonight Everybody's well Been a beautiful day Brother Mac and I had an interview today on TV the reason we're dressed like we are tonight. <laughs> My testimony is this. Monday afternoon, we're going to Alabama. Got the picture? Get in the car, we leave. She said, remind me to take my medicine when we get up here and eat. So we were at Ocala and we ate a little something. And we got to looking for our medicine, and guess where it was? On the bed at home. So we're back home, and then she left today to go. So remember her in prayer. Her, her sister, her mother's 93, and her sister usually has to take care of her all the time. So Janet's going to go up and relieve her and give her some time off. There's more family than that, but you know how families are. Some help and some don't. That ought to be a verse in the Bible, hadn't it? But uh, y'all look good tonight. Good looking bunch. Look at our young people over there. Well, remember, sir? You're looking fine, sir. Yes, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I worry about that. And you don't know how bad it is for me to get up in front of people when you're shy. But I just do the best I can. Well, what's coming? Sunday. Amen. Aren't we looking forward to it? Anybody ever been to church where you dreaded to go? Well, boy, our people eager to get here. And if spiritually we get ourselves in the right gear, we'll get more out of church when we come than if we didn't. You know, God's not going to just jump on you and jump down your back and bless you for being here. It says enter into his presence. We have to enter into it. By a direct act of our will and into his courts with praise. That's the closest way you could get to him back in those days. So that's uh, when next Sunday, Sunday school at 1030, church at 1130. Is that right? Sunday school at 830. Sunday school at 930. I just seen if you knew. And then church at 1030. 
So we look forward to that. But we're going to have a good time tonight and uh, praising the Lord. Look forward to the pastor. He's had some great teaching on Wednesday night, hasn't he? Um, let's begin our prayer time tonight. Um, remember Janet, she's traveling right now. And then as she goes up there and pray for me, I don't like staying by myself. I hear noises and Carol walks me to the door when we get to the house, but I think I'll survive. But, um, we saw Bobby Mace today, the preacher and I, it's like going to, um, you just have to go through so much to get in the hospital now. You go through this gate and they give you all these badges and, and you have to wear a mask. I enjoyed that. But uh, we had a good visit with him. He's doing better. He had pneumonia and some other issues, but he's doing better, isn't he? Amen. Let's remember Patty and Darla and Brother Mac. She's been doing wonderful, hasn't she? And Steve with the TV ministry, he's going to town. Yes, sir. Amen. He's doing good. <clears throat> Got a beautiful set. And you know what's impressed me about it? You watch some of these other programs like Daystar and all. I remember when we sang out there one time, you just stand in front of an old curtain. But we've got the prettiest set. And, and uh, we got cups with Christian World TV on it. And Steve only got, he and Brother Mac, a T-shirt. <laughs> so I don't know if he was trying to, you know, get in good with Brother Mac, getting him a T-shirt. But uh, <laughs> pray for him. It's a big undertaking what we're doing. So uh, why don't you come, Brother Dave? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Brother Dave, good to Thank see you. you, sir. It's good to be here. Thank you, brother. Hey, Lord bless you all. You know, it's, it's interesting that he mentioned hospital. So we call ourselves a hospital for sinners here, not a morgue for saints. Uh, but thankfully, we don't require all those badges and other things and, and uh, all the... the uh, stuff that you have to go through to get into a hospital these days. That, that's just, to me, it's lunacy. You remember the days when you used to be able to walk into people's rooms and, and there was a chart at the, at the foot of the bed? When I first started in ministry, I'd walk up to a person's bed, I'd pull up the chart, look at it, and go, oh yeah, you got this, this, and this. Hey, you're going to be all right. And nowadays, it's like, we don't know what they got. A lot of times, the nurses even make mistakes. We've been scanning this person. We don't know what's going on with them. It's really sad. But... The Lord is always good. Amen. And I was contemplating Romans 12. It's, it's like my life chapter. I love Romans 12. Uh, Romans 12, 10 says, Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love and honor preferring one another. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. God wants us to call on him before we even apply our own wisdom to things. Why is that? Because our wisdom fails. We cannot think the way that God thinks. For as the heavens are high above the earth, Isaiah says, for as the heavens are high above the earth, so are his ways above our ways and his thoughts above our thoughts. Amen. When we think there's no hope, God looks down at us and laughs. Hey, I can do miracles that you can't even imagine. I can do stuff that, that you have no idea about. All we have to do is connect with him. Continue instant in prayer. And I got to tell you, there's a lot of people that need prayer these days. Our country needs prayer. Our service members need prayer. Other Christians around the globe need prayer. And there's a lot of folks right here in our congregation suffering that need prayer. Before we get to the prayer, let's talk about praises. Does anybody have any praises that you'd like to share? Some encouragement that maybe has happened this week? Yes. I'm just tickled to death. My daughter was offered a job in her doctor's office with a raise in salary bigger than where she's at working at this nursing facility. Wow. She's there. She works nine to six. She has the weekends off so oh. she can do whatever. 
I, she can come see me this weekend. Yeah. And she is so thrilled. And I told her, I said, God is good all the time now. You just keep thinking that because we still need a forever home. Right. Amen. Amen. God, sometimes he pulls things out of a hat like that that you're not even expecting. Just all of a sudden, boom, there's a blessing. I love it when God does that. But I also like when I'm working towards something as well and, and have been praying about it and God answers. But those, those special ones are also, yes, Edda. I have, I have a praise. I have a praise. You know, I've been asking everybody to pray for Bob Gadsby and have told you about him being a sinner and his wife being a sinner. And he had burns over 75% of his body. Yeah. Third and fourth degree burns. They, it's a miracle he's alive. I just got the news from my girlfriend. It's her brother-in-law. She says, great news, Bob came home. They figured he can get someone to change his bandages four times a day. He can't do anything, but he is home. That's only a miracle from God. It is. Amen. And he goes back next week to be fitted for pressure bandages to help stop scarring. I think that his hospital bed was needed, but home is a good place for him. And she also wrote and said that he is thrilled with all the cards because I gave oh, everybody cool. the address to send Amen. cards. Amen. And all of these so far, from my understanding, is Christian cards. God is planting seeds to save him. We love that. We love that. Sometimes God has to knock us down on our backs to make us look up. And hopefully God is using this terrible situation to bring him into view. Um, I could give you story after story, but we go, we'll go on. Anyone else that has something that maybe God has done? I, I'll tell you, I've got a great praise. One of the kids I grew up with, the guy that lived across the street from me, his name's Stan. And Stan's a believer. Uh, he was Church of Christ way back in the day. Now he's more Baptist. And him and his wife are, are believers, and they're doing great. They still live in California. Sorry. But uh, he just got a new heart. He had a heart transplant Amen. last week, and he's already home and doing way better than he was Amen. before the transplant. So praise the Lord for that one. And, and it was incredible because he was only put on the heart transplant schedule two weeks earlier. So we only had a two-week wait. Boom, got a new heart and uh, doing great. Praise the Lord for that. Anyone else? A great praise? Something maybe God has done? Okay. How about prayer requests? I've got one. My dear friend Will and his wife Eve are in Georgia. Let's pray for them to make it home safe. And uh, all those ones that were already mentioned. And Janet, please, let's pray for all of those. Amen. Yeah. Pray for Sunday. Uh, anyone else? Yes. Come on, get that mic over there. <clears throat> Thank you all for your prayers in the past for my prayer partner, Nancy, and her husband, Wayne, up in Minnesota. Um, he's been dealing with multiple myeloma for three and a half years, and now it's pulmonary fibrosis. And it's not good, but he knows where he's going hmm. in eternity. And this week, the doctor recommended hospice, and I have been recommending that for three months, but the doctor said it once, and they called. <laughs> <laughs> so this is God's provision for comfort and peace. Amen. Until which time, if God chooses to do a miracle, he still can do that. That's awesome. So, yes. And that's exactly you. the right yeah. attitude to have. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Praise him about that. All right. Anyone else? Jen. We'll get that mic back to you here real quick. Um, I'll get better at this one day. So a girlfriend that I work with, she is a Christian. Um, she had some surgery on her foot and it got terribly infected. She's got MRSA and was in the hospital. And so she's very, very sick. So a prayer for her, she would appreciate. Yeah. Kathy, Kathy Stewart. Very good. Let's pray Sorry. for her. Yes. 
I have one. Y'all probably know him, Johnny Bogle. He called Jimmy today. He has COVID. Mm. We'll definitely be in prayer about that. He's not bad, but he's Yes, yes. Hi. Um, if you guys could pray for my dad, his name is Jerry, and um, he's 75 and his health is failing, and um, they had to put a catheter in this week, and he's just, his spirits aren't aren't good yeah so that does tend to de deflate people when they're having to have those kind of procedures yeah so it makes I, all the difference i just if you guys could pray that maybe i mean i guess he just like can't sleep and stuff like that so maybe pray that he's not in pain we'll pray for jerry thank you yes a uh, man I've known off and on over the years um, found out today that he's got cancer that has spread to both of his lungs. Mm. And he's not that old. Um, he's in his late 50s, early 60s maybe. Yep. But he is not saved. So his name is Daniel Shoemaker. Pray for um, salvation and for God to do a mighty work in him that, you know. Amen. Yes. Hey. Brother, er, okay, first. Yeah, I pray, pray the Lord that, uh, that he, uh, that I'm, you know, pretty, pretty good shape and stuff and <clears throat> not sickly and everything. I pray that, you know, I, uh, for, for, for God's will, you know, that he keeps, keeps it up. And I, I love the Lord. And uh, I know I don't come to church all the time, but uh, I try to make it when I can, I guess. So. Amen. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you. Brother Earl. Uh, yes, I just need prayer for, um, I just know her by Grandma Thompson. Okay. She's my uh, mother's uh, mother-in-law. She's 97 years old. She was found in her bed unresponsive last week, and she's in a, in a hospital on life support. They don't know how much more time she has. Is she a believer? Yes. Oh, well, amen. Yeah, she's ready to meet the Lord then. That, that's awesome. But uh, we still pray that if people can have a good quality of life, that God keeps them around. Yeah, I have several. Let's remember Brother Jerry Metzler uh, in prayer. And the Mitchells. Um, Brother Sister Mitchell usually sit right here up front. And Marcia's mother and dad. Um, and let's see if there was one other. I think jo um, Joe and Claire Bateman. So let's remember them in prayer. Amen. The great praise report, too, of answered prayers. Mary Brandon's home. We're glad of that. Yes. A lot of yeah. prayer went up for her. That is, God is, he's just too good. Yes. Uh, there's five uh, members of society that have COVID now. Oh, goodness. And uh, so keep them in prayer. And we pray that uh, it. The, the room where we do have this society, kids use that room too. So I want to pray that they go in there and they sanitize it so that the kids don't get the COVID too. Sure. But anyway, five of the, uh, we've wow. got Marty and Bob, we've got uh, Ken, Dot, and their grandson, all with COVID. Wow. It seems to be going around a lot right now. It's, it's, the good news is it's not as as bad as it was more people getting it but it's not as severe i would like prayer for the people that do have the COVID. now i've known two two in my neighborhood who do not follow the cdc and go out and about and don't let people know and just keep spreading it yeah yeah Let's definitely pray for them anyone else all right Brother Quentin, would you mind leading us in prayer tonight, brother? Oh, that'd be great. Oh, before we do, is there anyone here that has any unspoken requests? Yes, all around the room. All right. Brother Quentin, please. Lord God, we just want to thank you for the opportunity to gather in your house, to enjoy the fellowship and togetherness of each other's 
and bring our prayer request to you and bring our praise report to you. Lord God, we want to thank you for all the praise reports that have been brought forth this evening. And Lord God, we, we just look to you for the areas of need. We know, Lord God, that you are the great healer. We know that every, every uh, aspect of health is in your hands, Lord God. And we know that uh, there are those that are, are hurting badly. And we ask that you just send the Holy Spirit and, and give them comfort and give them resolution, Lord God. Lord God, we want to thank you for all that you've done for us. We love you. We love you for all your grace and mercies that you extend to us continually. Lord God, we just ask that as your witness brings the message tonight, that we just have an open heart and, and willingness and take these words and use them to the betterment of our daily lives. Now, Lord God, we look forward to the weekend. We look forward to the services over the weekend. We ask, Lord God, that there be visitors, and we ask, Lord God, that there be a great number, a good number in your house. And we ask, Lord God, that we just be prepared. And Lord God, we ask that you just walk with us and guide us through the remainder of this week and the days to follow. Give us a closer walk with you, Lord God. Give us a walk with you that others would see Christ in us. Now, Lord God, we pray these prayers in the name of our risen and living Lord and Savior, our Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you. Glory to his name. That's what we're here for, isn't it? To give him the glory. Let's all stand and sing that great old hymn, all right? Down at the cross where my Savior died, down where for cleansing from sin I cried, there to my heart was the blood of God. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. As we sing the next verse, the ushers will come for our offering tonight. I am so wondrously saved from sin. Jesus so sweetly abides within. There to the cross where he took me in. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory. Thank you for this time tonight. Thank you for the wonderful time of prayer that we've had. We ask for all those names that have been called tonight that you'd let them feel our love and strengthen their faith, whatever they're going through. Please anoint our pastor with the Spirit of God as he teaches us tonight and bless this offering as it goes to spread your gospel all over this world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
Let's continue to worship as Evie comes to sing for us at this time. <laughs> Good evening, church. <laughs> We're live. <laughs> I'm standing in for Brother Tom. <laughs> I'll get in the right key. Give me another chance, Tommy. Welcome our pastor, Dr. Mac Clements, to the pulpit. All right. Well, I'm glad I'm here tonight, aren't you? And uh, you know, I uh, was listening there very closely, and I noticed when singers sing, and it was B flat. D. Oh, I thought you said D. It's D flat. It was in D, but I was in the wrong key. Oh, you was in. That's not unusual for you. No. Yeah, but they can be in D flat and it's beautiful. But if I D flat, it's not too good. So I hope tonight I'm not in a flat, that I'm in a positive. Yeah. Well, it's good to be here, isn't it? Thank all of you for coming and being here and uh, looking forward to the end of summer. <laughs> And everybody get back home. But this is a good crowd tonight. If everybody was sitting together, 
we could probably fill up the center section. But I wouldn't want to make that request. I've been around too long. And uh, so anyway, it's good to have you. Thank you for sitting where you're sitting. I'm glad you're sitting with us tonight. And uh, so anyway, we make use of all the auditorium. Take your Bibles tonight. For the next few moments, turn to Romans chapter number 8. Now our screens are off tonight. We don't know if um, we've got a computer problem or something over here. But um, so you won't be able to see it on the screen. And that makes it bad on me because the print in my Bible is small. And my glasses are not very strong. And I can't tell the difference. But anyway, we're going to make it through tonight. Romans chapter number 8. And we're going to try, if we can, to finish up the study of Romans chapter 8. And i tell you what, I've enjoyed it. And it's been enriching to my heart and life, spiritually, to study through the chapter number 8. And I guess if I had one chapter in the New Testament that I could have, I believe I would choose Romans chapter 8. And it covers all the bases for the Christian life. So it's great tonight, and I want us to just, and um, I think I'm going to back up to verse number 31. I know it's a little bit repetitious from last week, but it's something that will hopefully lead us into uh, the rest of the chapter. And I want to start with that wonderful phrase, if God be for us, who, or could we say who or what? would stand against us. Did you know that's a powerful statement? Did you know that's a statement that all of us tonight, am I loud enough? I feel like I don't have enough monitors. We hear you, good. you can hear me good. Well, I'm going to turn my hearing aid up then. <laughs> but that's a statement that ought to give strength, stability, assurance to every child of God. Because we find in these verses following, Satan will attack us. Satan will throw everything in this world against us. He'll try to pull us down. He'll try to discourage us. He'll try to make us quit. But uh, who can stand against us if God is for us? And we need to understand we got greater is he that is in us, you and I than he that is in the world. So we got all power, we got all strength that we need to, to fight the Christian fight. The battle is won through Christ Jesus our Lord. So he said, who can be, and he said he spared not. And to put the, the, the period on it, to remind us how loving God is to us and how much he cares for us. He sent his only begotten son. He spared not his own son, the scripture says in that verse. He spared not his own son for you, whoever you are tonight, wherever you are tonight, listening. God spared not his, that's how much he loved us. That's how much he loved you. And so God sent his only begotten son into this world because we needed him. We were lost. But whosoever believeth and trusted in him hath everlasting life. Now let's go on a little bit. Um, he gave him, with him also gave us, gave us through. Are you sure the doors are locked? There's no one trying to shoot. Might have been, was there, yeah, I think that might be what happened to our computer. We're not real sure. Are we still on back there? Is the live streaming still on? Yes. Okay. So I got to behave? <laughs> no, that y'all got to behave. So he delivered up his own son so that we could freely... The Bible says, have all things. What do we need? Peace, assurance, 
Isn't that, you know, the assurance is one of the greatest gifts. The assurance of knowing you're saved. The assurance of knowing that God will never leave you. The, good, the assurance of knowing he'll never forsake you. The assurance of knowing that you're going to heaven. The assurance of knowing that you have eternal life. My God has given us all things that we need. Now, a lot of times we think we need things that we don't need. But what we really need, God gives to us. And there's nothing more needful than to know we have a right standing with God the Father. Now, how do I know and you know that we have a right standing with God the Father? Because His Son, our intercessor, makes intercession for us to the Father. And so, through His Son, we've been forgiven. Through His Son, we've been made perfect in the eyes of the Father. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. See, I may not be perfect, and we may not be perfect in each other's eyes, but that's okay. Long as I'm perfect in the eyes of the Father. Amen. Woo! Man, that takes a load off of my shoulders. I don't have to, I can sleep better at night. If my heavenly Father is pleased, and so through him, so it says in verse number 33, and I read this last week, who shall say, who can lay anything, who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Because it's God that has justified us. I mean, we've done been found innocent. And once you're found innocent, this comes to my mind. Once you're found innocent in a court of law, you can't be recharged. Yeah. You know, I think that came from the Word of God. A lot of our laws, originally when people were, when lawmakers were more godly, and they, they wrote the laws of the land, they, they took a lot from the Bible of our crime. We were found innocent. We had a great lawyer. Well, we had.